안녕하십니까 대구 스마트 치과의 박우영 원장입니다. 어, 오늘 I'm Dr. 온라인 마스터 코스에서 말씀드릴 내용은 임플란트 위한 방사선입니다. 어, 제가 오프라인에서 강의할 때도 가장 지겨운 시간이죠. When I provide offline lectures, it can be quite boring for many students because many people know about it. And this has been well known for a long period. Many people find it tedious and a bit boring, but this is something we must know. Therefore, I would like to briefly address upon it. In the offline course, we do tracing hands-on practice, but in the online course, I'm going to introduce the anatomical structures that you need to bear in mind. Let's look at the contents. First is the contents. Essential radiology for implants. Second, anatomical structures that must be confirmed using radiology for implants, both for the upper and the lower. 구조물에 대해서 저희가 살펴보고요. 그리고 어, 저희가 이제 수술 전, 수중, 수술 후, 그리고 어, 보철문에서 저희가 이제 확인해야 될 어, 추천 프로토콜이 있습니다. 어, 저희가 이제 세 가지 정도의 엑스레이, CT, 그리고 파노라마, 어, 그래픽이 세 가지 정도. 어떤 조합으로 저희가 These need to be used in combination as we provide clinical treatment. 추천 프로토콜을 이제 소개하는 시간을 갖도록 하겠습니다. First is essential radiology for implants. The reason why we need to check X-ray and the reason why there needs to be an X-ray. Let's look at the contents. We need to look at the intraosseous lesions and evaluate bone mass and tissue quality. 그리고 임플란트를 이제 아주 중요한 이제 해부학적 구조물을 뭐 상황적인 상황적인 구조물을 확인해야 되고요. 그리고 어, 임플란트를 어떤 위치에 어떤 각도로 심을 것이냐 여기에 대해서도 어, 이제 저희가 이제 평가를 해봐야 되고요. 어, 그리고 어, 저희가 이제 보철물 단계에서 if these are not correctly positioned, the prosthesis may not fit adequately. Once implant treatment is complete, we need to check the changes that occur afterwards. 다 끝나고 치료가 끝나고 난 다음에 추적 검사는 이제 변화를 갖다가 이제 관찰하는 용도로 이제 목적으로 저희가 쓴다. 어, 방사선, These are the purposes 음, we use the X-ray images for. There are additional factors, but uh, this is what we're going to address. As mentioned, panoramic image, 어, CT, 대로, panorama, and periapical image. The three are used primarily for treatment. First, let's look at panoramic images. 어, Using panoramic images, 보겠습니다. If I am to place an implant here, we need to determine how the adjacent teeth are going to be affected if there is any mobility or lesion, whether it should be extracted as well. As such, the condition of the adjacent teeth need to be checked. In the area where implant needs to be placed, we need to check whether there is any lesion. This is most important. In determining implant length, panoramic image is utilized. Using panoramic image, we can determine what length of an implant we can place here. Whether sufficient length implant can be placed needs to be evaluated. If necessary, we need to do bone graft. It may be necessary here as well. If we cannot place the length of an implant that we want, we can do additional procedure to overcome the situation, and that is why we take the CT. About a decade ago, many dentists used panoramic image for diagnosis, and not many had CT. But now, CT is very widespread, and we can get a lot of information using this. We can see anatomical forms of previously which we were unable to using panoramic images, such as bone angulation, concavity, and bone mass. 
권량이 정확한 권량을 좀 뽑을 수 있고요. 어, 그리고 또 똑같은 얘기입니다. 어, 그리고 조금 더 자세하게 골 밀도도 저희가 할수 있다. 거의 다 비슷한 겁니다. 네. 그리고 마지막으로 요즘 어, 소프트웨어 프로그램 저희가 이제 서버리를 시뮬레이션 할수 있다. 이것도 이제 시뮬레이션 할수 있는 부분이다. 그래서 어, 덴탈 CT가 With dental CT, before surgery, we can get a lot of information. This is a blessing. Let's look at the CT. CT is like this. Different kinds of depending on different setting, different ratio is displayed. We can utilize what we need. Bone width, bone length, length. Bone height, height to the bone, or check to determine the correct position of the implant. You can simulate this. Dangerous anatomical structures can also be evaluated to determine the length and diameter of the implant. You can check these ahead. Using periapical X-ray. What are the advantages? If there are portable X-rays available, you can check mandibular canal and other important anatomical structures even during surgery. You can check the sinus as well during surgery. Periapical view is used in prosthodontic phase to check the fit of implant body abutment and prosthesis. This will be addressed later. There is the X-ray. Whether the fit of prosthesis abutment is correct, you can check that. Periapical X-ray. Periapical X-ray can be very useful in this. Second, anatomical structures that must be confirmed using radiography for implants. I'm going to divide the section into upper and lower. First, let me look at the mandible first. There are five anatomical structures: mandibular foramen, mandibular canal, and mental foramen. Anterior loop by mental canal and incisive canal. These five structures. I want to emphasize what is most important in the mandibular canal. If you can only see one, this needs to be assumed as the inferior border. Normally, the mandibular canal is shown in two, but if you can only see one, you need to assume that it is the inferior border. Mental foramen. It is normally between first and second premolar, but it is more frequently seen around second premolars. Now, anterior loop. Anterior loop. The mandibular canal runs inferiorly, anteriorly, forming a loop approximately four millimeter in the first premolar region, and if we infringe upon it, then nerve damage can occur. Using radiological image, we need to check these five major structures. In the upper, we need to look at nasal cavity, maxillary sinus, maxillary tuberosity, zygomatic arch, and zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone. Two things. In the anterior area, in determining length of the implant, nasal cavity plays an important role. And in the posterior area, you need to factor maxillary sinus. We can determine whether additional procedures such as sinus graft is necessary. Our last but not least, so let's look at how we're going to get the necessary clinical information by using the recommended protocols and using the radiography images. Before implant surgery, Immediately after the surgery and during the surgery, 
그리고 임플란트 수술하는 And 중에 보철물을 어, 딜리버리 할때 임플레이션 뜰때 This is the basic guideline. And during implant surgery, we need to use all three images. In delivering prosthesis, you can use periapical image and the panoramic image. When checking the fit of superstructure with the implant, the PA image can provide most accurate information. So, if you remember this, as you provide an implanted treatment, you'll be able to use X-ray images appropriately. This is the end. Today I've talked about radiology for implants. It can be a bit boring. If we meet offline, we can do other hands-on practice, such as tracing. But because of the limitation of online course, I just looked at the key factors. 간략하게 어, 온라인으로 핵심되는 부분만 살펴봤습니다. 어, 고맙습니다. Thank you for watching.